I'm so glad that I can talk with you uh, today. Uh, I'm talking with Sarah Victoria, uh, head of uh, PEM International Office, also actress and uh, PEM master instructor. Uh, at the moment in Australia, I am in Slovakia. That's yeah. a really cool situation. Uh, and um, let's um, do a small introduction, Sarah, about your, your story. Uh, how did you uh, get in uh, PEM method as actress and then as instructor? Yeah. Um, so basically, I was, uh, when I was young, I was, uh, you know, I knew right away I need to become an actress, right? <laughs> I want to be an actress. Um, and I was looking for the right schools and the right approaches. So I was looking basically anywhere after I did the very traditional acting school. Um, and I wasn't satisfied with it. So I left the school actually and um, studied in London. I studied drama in London. I was still trying to look for something which I actually didn't know back then. Right? So I was really <laughs> young and I was looking for something, but I didn't know um, until I found uh, PEM. You know? And in the first two seconds, I, I really, I knew, ah, oh, this is actually the missing link. I was looking for, I didn't even know. Yeah, but um, I met Stefan Pördekamp, who is the creator of PEM mm -hmm. there. Um, and then I stayed in the ensemble, you know, from, from you know, 2001, I think I started, 2001 or 2002. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that's, that's a pretty long time now. And I stayed with them and then, uh, basically, because I studied in London, I knew that actors were very curious in London and I wanted to spread this knowledge around the world because it helped me so much, you know, as a, as a performer, but also as a human being. And um, that's where I felt the responsibility, you know, I need, to, I need to spread this knowledge. And I became head of PEM International and started traveling for the past you know, six, seven years, just really everywhere um, from Russia to Japan, to India, to the US, UK, Europe. And then I landed in Australia in 2017. And that's where I've been since then, uh, setting up our, our studio here. So we've got one base in Germany mm -hmm. and then uh, in Hamburg. And then we've got one in Melbourne in, in Australia. Yeah, that's great. So yeah, in that time frame, um, we you know we acted, uh, you know we performed the plays. We wrote our own plays. Yeah, we we love actually creating our own stories, and um, love creating the stories where we think, oh, that's that really touches people, and um, yeah, and at the same time, I you know decided very early to become a coach because it helped me not only with clarifying a lot of the things that were not clear for me as an actor, because mm -hmm. I could have an outside look and observe actually things. Yes, yeah? so it was actually part of our program. And, um, and it became so clear through coaching myself mm -hmm. and then doing it myself. So it kind of, you know, was vice versa. The acting um, was better and then the coaching was better. So it was <laughs> like, yeah, that was the ideal combination. And um, yeah, I've been doing this for, yeah, for, yeah, since then, 18, <laughs> over 18 years. <laughs> What is uh, some basic introduction of uh, this method, some basic points and thoughts uh, for PEM? Yeah, okay. Um, there's a long, long, long <laughs> yeah. answer. Yeah, <laughs> but, but, um, I tried to make it really short. Um, yeah. So basically, PEM is a comprehensive acting method. So what we, for example, in Germany, we've got a three-year acting program that, uh, you know, it takes you three years to actually yeah. really get through everything with performing and all of it. Um, but the handy thing is it, you can just also use it as a complementary method. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you can actually choose whatever you, you want to do. Um, it's a very flexible method, but mm -hmm. 
I think for performance, it's good to know that it is a comprehensive me method. Mm -hmm. So we cover basically all subjects that are necessary for acting, um, from you know emotional processes to character work to text work, body work, voice work, um, singing, everything, yeah. basically. Mm -hmm. um, and what we usually start with is the emotional process because it's a very, very, very different approach to the emotions. And um, basically, you know, when, when we talk um, about emotions, we usually talk about psychological processes, you mm -hmm. know, and about imagination and trying to get into the emotions. And basically what Stefan Perdekamp, who, you know, created them, what he found out are the physiological and neurological uh, pathways of triggering the emotion on a purely physical basis, right? Mm -hmm. So not imagining, you know, your own traumatic circumstances, but actually getting straight and cutting straight through into the body and finding out the exact and repeatable and minute processes that are happening in the body that usually psychology triggers with memories mm -hmm. yeah that's so that's yeah. yeah and we've got um six basic emotions we've got aggression um, happiness grief lust fear and revulsion mm -hmm. and with those uh, six basic triggers they are located in your body very precisely when you know them you can basically construct any other emotion that exists mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right so it can get very complex right mm -hmm. um and then from there from the emotions um stefan predicam developed exercises that uh, goes basic, basically exercises that go beyond your personal experiences because everybody you know experiences emotions in with a cultural background right we all grow up in culture and mm -hmm. suppressing emotions right with a lot of blockages so usually what people experience as you know, they think that's one emotion is a jamming of a lot of emotions together. Mm -hmm. And because they jam so much and they work really quickly, you can't actually make out the difference. What is actually what? So he developed exercises that release blockages mm -hmm. and clear your own body and create a permeability. Permeability is a very, very important word in, in, in our terminology because we actually want to create a permeable actor's body yeah mm -hmm. which means that once you 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 know you look at your own patterns and conditionings you can actually leave them much better behind and actually go to the conditionings of the character mm -hmm. right yeah. yeah and that's that's basically you know it's a it's a process you know, with, with these exercises, so we've got about five to ten exercises for each mm -hmm. basic emotion. Good. Cool. <laughs> Good. Well, the next question is um, also all of us uh, theater creators, we have some experience with some breakdowns uh, of uh, uh, actors. Uh, so how we can prevent um, uh, this or my question is, uh, can we grasp uh, uh, emotions on uh, physical uh, base to avoid uh, this yeah absolutely yeah okay yes i've got experience so in my uh, in my old acting school um mm -hmm. i was doing you know stanislavski and strasberg and you know a lot of other methods so i've got a lot of experience with that and basically you know to to actually put it in a nutshell i remember this this one moment um I was rehearsing in a park and I was playing a murderer. And um, I remember this moment, the switch in my head where I really, you know, it's hard to describe, but it's this psychological switch. And I thought, whoa, I need to kill somebody now. And it felt so real. And, uh, and that shell shocked me out of the character completely. And I thought, you know, what's gonna what's gonna happen if we really follow through with this right and um trying to to get your own psychology and your own intensity um you know from your own experiences into your profession mixes up your life and your profession so there are no boundaries you know and back yeah. then when i was young i tried to you know live 
a very, very intense life and try to be, you know, you know, as crazy as possible and try to take, you know, all the, the, you know, everything that I can live through so that I can then put it on stage, you know, on, in yeah. front of the camera. And I thought, I'm not going to last. I'm not going to last for the next five, 10 or 20 years in this profession if I keep doing this, right? Mm -hmm. So that was one of the reasons why I kept yeah. looking, but I didn't know what I was looking for. And so basically what, what, back then this was a very very new and very very good thing right psychology was still new so what happened back then was this this new creation of taking psychology right and putting it you know into your character and on stage right mm -hmm. so that's that was the knowledge back then but nowadays we know more you know we all developed right and um basically these are actually techniques, you know, from the 20th century and even, you know, Stanislavski was even before uh, that, right? So he was yeah. born 18 something, right? And this is, uh, there, there needs to be new development. And what, what I found was so helpful is to not take those psychological triggers. Mm -hmm. yeah. What I found so helpful is to not take your own psychological triggers and try to go with this into, into the situation, but actually take your, your physiological triggers, your, the neurological pathways, yeah, and your nervous system reacts to it. So when you find out where your physiological triggers are, yeah, you can create the authenticity that usually psychology creates. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. uh, what actors are afraid of, uh, that they feel guilty if they don't use their own uh, psychological uh, experiences uh, or their personal experiences. Uh, they feel guilty that they don't give to audience uh, all emotions in the right way. It's maybe that. Yeah, totally, totally. And I think this comes from... from you know, this comes also from an old picture of, you know, what the actor needs to be, right? And we're living in the 21st century, mm -hmm. right? So yeah. we need new technologies, right? And it's not like, you know, with, with every new development, we actually want to know about the new development and the new technology. So this is something I think we really need to, to feel like, because the interesting thing is, um, you can you can create your intensity right you can be completely intense and authentic but you don't have to take your own personal experiences but i think what's mixed up is usually that actors think when you don't take your own personal experiences it's not authentic mm -hmm. so so far and that's the new thing right now there's a technology right the PEM actually tells you the minute processes that you can take and that you can learn and repeat very precisely over and over again. And you can come to the same result without, you know, destroying your own psyche. Yeah. Mm. And I think that's what we need to just take on as a new picture of, of a modern actor and not trying, you know, to replay the old stuff, which, you know, there's actually um, a study, Australian well-being study, from uh, somebody called Dr. Mark Seaton. I know him, you know, in contact. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's a study that you can actually find in the internet. And he did a lot of research um, that, you know, how detrimental this is to actors and to the actor's brain and to the mental, mental illness and mental health, right? So all of these things are coming up now because we're actually always trying to use our own psyche. And when you feel constantly guilty, I mean, that's, that's, that's really harming your system, right? <laughs> A lot when, you, when you're not using your, your own psychology. Yeah. yeah. So I think um, what's just really important is, like with any other profession, you know, we need to look at new ways of creating authenticity and creating, you know, emotions in a different way and um, not trying to follow, you know, old pathways constantly. Yeah, yeah. that's a very interesting idea with the picture of new actor, because uh, I think all, all of us directors, we are looking for performers 
in complicity um, and um, who are able to uh, use their physicality and, and so on. So it's very interesting, uh, the new picture of the actor. When you know where the triggers are located in your body, you can go into the emotion and go out of the emotion quite quickly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. you can literally you know, leave the trigger behind and go out of the emotion. And this is a purely physical process. Mm -hmm. And the thing is just really, it's, it, it was just not, it has never been there before. Yeah. Right? It has never happened like this before. Mm -hmm. So we can avoid those breakdowns by actually looking for the physiological triggers and the neurological pathways where the nervous system, you know, fully and authentic, you know, authentically, you know, goes into what the character situation is. But then because you know exactly what you're doing, you can go out of it again. Mm -hmm. Right. And we've got that in other professions like musicians. Right. They know exactly what to do when they play, you know, the guitar and the violin and they can leave it behind. It's not like, you know, they need to, you know, kind of, you know, be intense about something and go with us. They practice for hours and hours and hours and hours. So we need actually a reliable method that we can practice for hours. Right. Mm -hmm. After this introduction, I think we can answer the question, uh, for example, where uh, do your tears on the stage uh, come from? When you, for example, build uh, fear or um, sadness, uh, can we some, in some practical way explain how we can uh, use this uh, PEM method as uh, a tool? As I'm an actor and I'm supposed to uh, be in a character who is um, crying and have big, big expressions of emotions. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So basically, I think one, one, there are several important points to this, but um, definitely one point is crying is not a sign, you know, of grief. You can cry out of every emotion. You can cry out of, out of lust, out of happiness, out of aggression, you know, out of fear. So basically the tears themselves, you know, don't actually, um, the tears themselves don't um, indicate that you're sad. There are a lot of people who are actually in sadness and who don't cry. Yeah. Right. That's it. Yeah. So right. this is, I think, really, really important because it comes also from a very generalized, you know, old, you know, psychological picture. But you know, sadness doesn't necessarily mean tears. It, yeah. it literally doesn't. Yeah. But tears can also mean different emotions. Yeah. So that's very, very confusing. And basically, yes, there's a trigger. So grief is one of our basic emotions. We know where it's located in the body. We know the facial expression. We know the muscle movements, you know where they need to go to when, when you experience actually grief. And basically what's, what's very interesting with, with the crying part is when you find your own personal setting, Right. So, um, you know, it can be a creation of, you know, grief and fear together, for example, and that creates a certain intensity. So basically, tears are a sign of intensity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it makes not sense. a yeah. sign mm -hmm. of, you know, you know, sadness. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. this is this is really important once you know the physiological triggers. Yeah, and the neurological pathways, you know, where your nervous system jumps on that, you can actually find your own personal mixture to create your intensity that leads you to tears. And again, it won't always be just sadness. Yeah, yeah this is really important because I think a lot of actors are looking then for, you know, you know this, this, you know, the face, you know, yeah, yeah. and trying <laughs> to think of the memories and all of that. And, um, there's another thing with this, um, the, the sadness, and especially when you think of your own situations and you use them over and over again, right? Um, you actually, you work through your own patterns so that it could be that actually the tears just stay away because you work through it. 
you released it <laughs> yeah. yeah and and that's that's another that's another point we actually you know we shouldn't do you know imagine you you're on stage and that happens to you yeah? yeah so there's there's really there's a lot of mix up there's a lot of mix up what is actually then grief and what is loss yeah so there's mm -hmm. also very different things and it's not the same it's not the same so yes yeah when you know the physiological triggers where they're located in the body you can create your own intense mixture and that can make you cry that's totally. very that's very interesting because also in um, when i was studying um, history of literature like uh, we were focusing on a penetration big penetration of, of feelings and we found out that uh, people are usually silent they are they they don't start to cry they they totally. <laughs> they are so shocked so yeah. it's very interesting your idea of uh, of uh, uh individual mixturing of uh, feelings and that's very interesting creation of uh, the every actor who is trying to work um, not in general way but uh, in his own individual way absolutely yeah. absolutely yes. and you know it, i think it's really important because also if you're trying to just cry and find your own personal mixture there's no guarantee that this actually fits to every character yeah. that you're playing right <laughs> there's actually more on the other side it's actually not the guarantee that it will fit you know the coincidence yeah. that it's the same you know for the for the character what you are doing and the character is doing is it's it's not right yeah. so this is really also something that you will replay your own personal pattern over and over again and the versatility you know is not mm. is not given as much because yeah. you're not letting the character actually get there but you're trying to find you know with your own pictures you're trying to just create the situation of it but not through the specific character do you oh, know what i mean yeah absolutely talent and PEM method how is it so um basically talent is like the, the base of it right and the thing is your talent is never enough what needs to happen is the practice yeah when you and the best example is you know when with a musician right when you're a talented musician and you never practice well nobody will ever know but this is the same thing in acting too but unfortunately we're creating also these situations where actors trying to be you know just showing up to rehearsals and trying you know to hope for the best and just wing it you know and and trying to use that talent without actually repetition that because also they don't know what to repeat and when they repeat it it starts to get stale so they always want to keep this freshness mm -hmm. right yeah and um talent is not any you know it's not something but it's very interesting we're using this method you know with people um with um with depression with people on the spectrum you know with autism and asperger's and we we use um we use it for anxiety you know stress syndrome mm -hmm. so we use it for a lot of or just simple personal development mm -hmm. yeah so we we're using it a lot um you know for people who are not artistic talented right but we are all human we all have bones and nervous systems and organic system and muscles and breathing so these are the the basic functions in our body yeah it's a biological method right so we're going to these basic biological processes and that's why it works with the body mm -hmm. with every body yeah. if they want to go there and if they want to do it right so what we usually call them talent later is um you know something what you can learn with the exercises is basically creating a permeability mm -hmm. right so yeah. you know some people have a different upbringing than other people right yeah. that doesn't mean that they're less or more talented yeah mm -hmm. but through the exercises you can actually 
go through your upbringing and clear those blockages and with those um you know with those cleared blockages with those with the clarity in the body you reach a certain permeability that you know when you go to aggression you can do it right away you know and then you you can go to grief and sadness and then you can go to lust right away and then to fear you know and, and yeah so it's everything every impulse in your body that you follow that's what we would then call permeability that you can also you know express or decide to express you know yeah. a certain way that the character um that's and people would call it talent but you can actually train this mm -hmm. yeah that's perfect yeah cool i think if uh, anyone is it interested uh, uh for example from slovakia where we can find your centers of uh, the method in europe or um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So um, basically, we we are located in Hamburg. So we've got one center in Hamburg in Germany, and we've got one in Melbourne in mm -hmm. Australia. So it's quite <laughs> far apart, <laughs> <laughs> quite spread out. Um, and then, of course, I'm doing a lot of online training. I'm doing a lot of um, online workshops, especially nowadays, you know, in, I mean, in COVID like... times. But, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I've been doing this for a while. But that's my question, if you can compare online uh, workshop and uh, uh, live uh, workshop, uh, is it possible because many people don't trust uh, the online way of uh, learning? Uh, what's your opinion, your experiences? Yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely possible. <laughs> absolutely possible. <laughs> cool. I've, been, I've been holding online workshops and one-on-one -on -one sessions um, for about seven years now, over seven years wow. with actors worldwide, you know, because we coach actors, you know, on, on Netflix and, and in Hollywood and, you know, in America and Russia, you know, and I've been traveling, but I can't travel everywhere, especially nowadays, you can't, yeah. right? So um, this is a very, very good tool to actually teach the minute processes that are happening in your body um, online. And the interesting thing is because Stefan Predikam found out those physiological processes in such a fine, very precise and very concrete way, it actually doesn't matter if there's a screen in front of you or if there's, you have a life, you know, if your life in the space, you know, with the person, because the processes in your body stay the same. So what I've learned over the years is basically getting really good at um, discovering the minute processes in the body, leading them through everything, you know, and there is no difference if there's a screen in front of you or, you know, if I'm there because I can describe what's happening in the body. I can feel it right away and I can tell them what to change, right? Yeah. So they can make it repeatable. So it's basically exercises i can teach them and then they can go away and train it for themselves you know come back and then we do the next step so it always goes deeper and deeper and deeper and i've been you know i've been skyping i've been skyping with actors for example from new york i've been skyping for two <laughs> years and i haven't even met them personally right wow. um, or even you know on the other end of australia for three years now right and i've met him once in person in between but um i'm coaching him for his movie now so it's like for for character work so it's it's absolutely possible but you know it's only possible because we are so clear about everything. It's very precise. Yeah, it's yeah. really about literally learning how to drive the car. Yeah, mm. learning how to drive your own emotional system, your own body. Yeah, it's a comprehensive system where you learn on an on on an energetic level. Yeah, to actually you know construct your your character. Yeah, so there's a, a big difference between the training you know and then actually for the actor's creation process to not concentrate on emotions the cool thing is when you know where the emotions start from we actually go to the character yeah so that's who we create yeah, yeah yeah and and then we hand over our own body the actor's body to the character so that the character can express the emotions, which are not our own emotions. It's the character's emotions. And as you can, you know, I don't know if you can feel that, yeah? <laughs> as you can imagine, this is a process 
that is very detailed and very fine and very layered and complex, not complicated, but very complex. And you can work endlessly on that for years. Right. <laughs> and I myself, you know, I'm, I'm still, I, I have, you know, sessions every, every week with Stefan Perdekamp um, himself. So I, I've been training for, you know, over 18 years and it's, it's beautiful because you always learn always learn and always go deeper so basically you know there's no um you know in the one-on-one -on -one sessions of course we can't concentrate on group or partner exercises that's clear right but um they're about 70 percent of you know what we do before we can go into a group is like oh we can you know 70 percent of that we can teach online <laughs> yeah. not a problem at all well, yeah. it's very optimistic uh, because many people are skeptic that it's uh, not possible uh... um it's not only optimistic it's the reality of it mm. so basically you know i've i've been teaching at universities here at the you know um best australian drama universities here holding online workshops um and and also you know really really around the world it it literally works i can prepare actors for the auditions in a short amount of time or we can work like years and years and develop and go deeper and deeper and deeper so it's a very what i like personally also with with that it's a very flexible system mm -hmm. you know you can really decide what you want to do with it you know and how you 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 know what kind of actor you are and how how deep you want to go with it so um it's it's not only optimistic there's really there's the reality behind it you know and especially in covid times you know many people book the workshops of course yeah. and oh it totally works <laughs> it totally works you know at the, yeah, it's great you to universities um yeah that's Absolutely. great so uh, also i can uh, tell you just from our small session uh, that yeah. uh, i was so surprised that uh, it works and uh, uh, this experience could go through the screen to me can you uh, tell us or give us a kind of mm -hmm. uh, exercise to slovak actors and creators okay yeah so basically this is one uh, of our first and very basic exercises which um so we'll explain it yeah so we can do it together yeah and um we take this and basically apply it this sense you know um to everything we find out in the acting processes so um can you rub your hands together yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah really rub them yeah. yeah and make them hotter yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. can you feel that yeah, yeah can generate I, some yeah. heat yeah cool now hold them close together but don't touch with the palms yeah can you still feel some heat yeah 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 so there should be you know a little bit density some heat some warmth some tingling yeah that's your electricity that's your own energy yeah bioenergy and now you can start to play with this so it needs to be a very tangible thing yeah not something that you think about but it's tangible can you feel when you go further apart with your hands now so away with them that you can still feel it it starts to get a bit cooler right yeah can you feel that <laughs> yeah and now when you go together again slowly yeah go together again you feel you start to feel it more intense again right? yeah so this is the sense um and basically with this sense we locate the electrical triggers in the body and start to trigger very specific places in the body that trigger the emotions and neurological and neurological pathways to your whole you know physical experience that's cool Does that yeah makes sense absolutely yeah yeah, yeah. that's cool yeah, Thanks yeah. So and as you could mm -hmm. oh pleasure yeah. and and as you could could feel could you feel it's not a mental process you don't need to think about it it needs to be tangible everything we do is a very hands-on practical approach yeah, it's practical exercises and it's not something that you need to imagine. It's not something that you need to think about, but it's purely physical. Yeah, so you yeah. start to get to a 
finer awareness to more sensitive awareness in the body. And with this, you'll be able, you know, to play big, you know, on big stages and to play very subtle and small for close-ups. Yeah. Mm, that's perfectly yeah, and, example. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. And there's mm. maybe one more thing, you know, uh, I mean, there's so many more things, but, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, but one, one, one important thing to mention, the breath, you know, the breath is basically the fuel for the emotions, right? So with this, once you, you learn how to actually biologically breathe, yeah, and this is, this is you, know, what, what, you know, another thing that we do. The breath is, is a key because it fuels the emotion, yeah? It's your, it's your gas pedal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, in the car, yeah. right? So it's your accelerator or you slow it down. Yeah, and that's basically what you do on stage. So for big expression of emotion, yeah, you need a lot of breath. And for small, you need a tiny little breath. And I think this is one crucial thing because we all restrict the breath, you know. So this is where usually, and this is where usually actors get stuck with their emotions or maybe sometimes also you know, when they, when they can't go to intensity is they're stuck with the breath. Mm -hmm. you know, so that's one of the things we look at actually first. And of course, there's this whole topic of PIM, PIM voice work. Right? Yeah. Sarah, I really like uh, this interview. It's full of very interesting information. Thanks Thank a lot you. for Thank your you. time. And yeah. I hope uh, that we meet online on some workshop for uh, yes. our group of actors. I would be so glad if uh, it's possible. Definitely. I'm looking forward to it. That's, forward to, that's yeah. really great. And 